And hello, everyone. Welcome to Live Live Fully, the show. I'm so glad you're here. I have an amazing guest today, and I can't wait to bring her here because we have, we're going to have such a fantastic chat, and you will understand why I can't wait for today's interview. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Sabrina Cadini. For those who don't know me, I am a holistic life coach, a brain fitness coach, lots of fun stuff, and the creator of the Life Work Balance System for busy professionals. So if you're one of them, so, so, so glad that you are here. Welcome to the show. And if you're watching live with us today, please type in the comment box. I am live on Facebook and on Periscope. So let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and uh, why you're here. I hope you're here for some fun and you'll have it. I can guarantee that. <laughs> so as you know, the show was born uh, thanks to my new book, Live Life Fully, which which is now available for pre-order for just a few more days until Friday or Saturday. I can never remember the time, the, the date, but it's either Friday or Saturday. It's either, you know, one or more. It's been like 30 days of a crazy whirlwind book crowdfunding campaign, and I'm so excited. And thank you so much for your support. I know you will love this book, and I can't wait for you to read it. So let's talk about um, one of the key points in the book. As you probably know, if you've been following me on social media, you've seen that I posted a lot of information about the book, just to give you a better idea of what to expect from it. And today I will talk about the last key point in the list, which is key point number one. And I will put the graphic up here, and it is about resources. You will get access to worksheets to create an effective action plan, plus recipes, a list of experts, books, podcasts, and more. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite part of this book, as it provides you with great resources to implement all the tips and strategies that I will share in Live Live Fully. I mean, reading a book is fun, but if you don't know how to implement the tips and strategies, what's the point? right? I'm always about implementing what I learn immediately. And you will find spreadsheets, questionnaires, checklists, and more that will help you create a step-by-step -step action plan to improve one or more areas in your personal and or professional life. Also, I put an amazing list together of experts in different areas. As you know, the book touches nutrition, sleep, movement, stress management, self-care, and mindset that you can get to know, follow on social media, and connect with to further educate yourself on the budget, on the subject. They have all been my mentors and they all taught me a lot about the body and brain connection. So you will have access to access to their websites, to their podcasts, books, and more. So my question for you is, are you ready to upgrade yourself? Do I hear yes? I hope so. And if that's the case, please pre-order my book at subcat.link forward slash book order, which is right there. Ta-da! <laughs> Okay, so enough about the book. Now I want to dedicate completely full attention on my beautiful guest, uh, who is uh, Zala Britzel. Yay! <laughs> so excited. I couldn't wait for this to happen because really we've been friends for not a long time, but still it feels like we've been friends since like we were little girls, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so much and uh, Zala is coming to us via Slovenia and I'm in California remember last week I had Irene Betty and she's in Ireland so thanks to technology we can connect and have fun and chat whenever we want uh, like this from our homes and, from our offices. and yeah and I think we have a real life with us today also Oh. Absolutely, absolutely. There it is. Irene is uh, watching the show and she's saying, Hi, ladies. Hi. <laughs> the trio. 
And you know, guys, we belong to uh, a divas group on Twitter. It's uh, how many? 26, 27 ladies. And uh, so everyone is saying, wouldn't miss it. And it's such an amazing and inspiring uh, group of ladies. And Irene, to me, uh, is our official cheerleader, as I recently commented in the group, because she's always there championing and helping us and having always the right work at the right time for each of us. I don't know how she can do it. She yeah. is constantly cheering us up and uh, she has such a great attitude about life, positive attitude that we really need, right? We all yeah. need it. So exactly. thank you. I am yeah. a great supporter for all of us. You have a wonderful heart and we will never forget that. So thank you so much. So let me say something about Zala. We'll talk about the, the, the wonderful human being that Zala is and then the business person. And uh, I could go on for hours uh, talking about Zala's accomplishments and everything. But Zala, the wonderful human being, is uh, one who enjoys hiking, taking photographs and listening to music and is keen on taking on flamenco, dancing again, because her heart and soul speak Spanish and they're drawn to Latin American temperament and culture. I so agree with that. I love that. The rhythm, right? The flavor. Yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Italian. You're Slovenia. So probably because of this European and very affectionate yes. coming, right? Yes. Way of living. Yeah. Uh, Zala has also taken on a reading habit. She reads five to 10 pages on her Kindle every day. That's a great job. So in a month, she gets to read at least one book. I need to learn that from you because I am so inconsistent about that. She strongly believes in creating healthy habits from daily exercise. She gets in 20,000 steps a day. Guys, learn that. It's amazing. <laughs> to eating and cooking homemade meals and most importantly, to getting enough sleep and rest daily. Without rest, we can't function properly. I couldn't agree more because I was telling you the last few weeks during the book crowdfunding campaign, my sleep is less, probably because of that, all this whirlwind situation. I'm so excited about the book and I'm getting so much in return, like interviews, people who want to talk to me and responding to emails and talking to people, that my sleep is a little less and I'm feeling that. I can't function properly. Who, what's yeah. going on today? <laughs> <laughs> right? So we'll talk about that. About the business person, Zala is a digital and social media marketer. She works in the IT education marketing field for more than a decade. And as a digital strategist, she coaches individuals, companies, and teams to successfully position themselves online and on social media. And she teaches and demonstrates safer internet usage, which I think is so relevant in today's age, right? I mean, I'm yeah. trying to get more and more requests because safety online is such a big, big topic. Mm -hmm. She carries out workshops in Slovene schools and educational organizations. Uh, she's also a certified NLP practitioner and an NLP master coach. Uh, what else? I have so much to talk about. Uh, she's an early adopter, technology-wise, dedicated advocate of digital transformation, and MOOCs, which are online courses, and maybe she will tell us more about that. On Twitter, she's very active, and she's also the co-host of the Biz Heroes Twitter chat, which is a fantastic chat that I always miss. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is such a great chat with always great and relevant topics. So Zal, I am so excited to have you here. And uh, also Darcy De Leon is joining Yay! us. Hey, Twitter Smarter Friends. And yes. This is so beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Darcy. So what are we going to talk about? I, I think we can be here for like a three or four hours. Yes. <laughs> chat, right? We sometimes chat, you know, via like Facebook Messenger or Skype or whatever. And uh, our conversation never ends because we have yeah. so much to share, right? So tell us about um, your, your daily life. I mean, what do you love about life? I mean, you talked about the daily exercise. Uh, I know that you started making pasta. Like yes, I started making pasta. So, yeah, tell us about these beautiful, I would say, hobbies and activities that also can bring you more well-being to life, right? I mean, some, sometimes, you know, people can have hobbies that are really 
putting uh, it, worsening their well-being. But you are <laughs> finding hobbies that improve our well-being. Yes. Share them with us. <laughs> Well said, Sabrina. Well said. I love it. Um, love you guys back. Thank you so much again, Irene and Darcy, for being here. Uh, that really shows the power of community. And as I always say, that really shows. Uh, I always say, and I want to say it also on camera, um, I have learned so much from Sabrina regarding live streaming and going live because I think that uh, she's not only just natural, but uh, uh, you have such a great way of making all the guests feel like, like we're sitting in your living room, just chatting away and uh, just having a wonderful, great time. So um, really grateful for that and really grateful for the opportunity to be here. And I'm actually uh, really excited to speak to you and everybody in community today because um, I think that um, I would like to say, yes, I've had, you know, positive uh, habits or I've uh, practiced uh, positive behavior like uh, forever. But um, I also had to make uh, my own steps and uh, carve out my own way. But uh, since, let's say, a year ago or a year and a half, uh, a year and a half ago, um, I really started focusing not only being present in the moment, but uh, also, uh, also uh, focusing on, you know, discovering uh, things uh, in my life and also in my business that I enjoy doing uh, are not directly related to, uh, let's say, maybe everyday life or the business that, that I do, uh, but that bring me immense joy uh, and help me to uh, focus, uh, help me to find, you know, my inner energy and uh, inner sources of power, which one was already mentioned by Sabrina. Uh, yes, we started making our own bread uh, and our own sourdough bread. And I think it's been like six months. We've not bought any store uh, bought uh, bread or anything uh, because I just enjoy, you know, creating the dough, then having it rest and then putting it in the oven and then just, you know, seeing it come to life. And it's, it's like a wonderful experience. And we've talked that also with um, our own uh, uh, little pasta machine. We bought uh, like pasta machine that you can, you know, you can do it by hand. But we make our own dough and then, you know, we uh, kind of uh, uh, create that uh, wonderful long stretched uh, pasta uh, that we cook for ourselves. And I have to tell you, I've never and I, I have eaten pasta in Italy and all over the world. And, uh, you know, I know all kinds of pasta. But it's just amazing making something on your own, you know, making the whole process, then, you know, cooking it and then eating it. It's like priceless and amazing. I, I, I can't say say more. And we've made like pasta, like the noodles. And we've also made ravioli. And um, I was kind of skeptical and I said, OK, for the first time, let's make it. We'll see maybe if it's yay, if it's nay, we don't eat it. But it was just amazing I, I i can't tell you it's like uh it's like that special comforting feeling that you get uh when you eat something you that you've prepared and you sit down and you enjoy it and you say you know that's what life is all about and uh, for me uh no matter you know what goes on no matter what happens that's what life is all about creating you know those moments for yourself, for your family, those moments <clears throat> that actually matter and, you know, uh, those moments that you're just there doing something that you want, focusing on something that makes you happy, that uh, makes you feel good and um, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it uh, actually for the world. And uh, I hope to find even more recipes to do it. Uh, and I actually hope to continue um, to continue this path of self-discovery and discovering things that actually make me happy. 
it's uh, when Sabrina also mentioned that you know I'm a, I'm an avid hiker. I love walking, uh, and um, it's like uh, because I I use a health tracker. I know how many uh, I know how many steps uh, that I make. But it's like uh, uh, that you know twenty thousand steps has become something that I do daily and normally. And when I don't do it, or when I miss like a dog walk or a hike or something. Thing, it's like I say, mm, okay, I have, you know, I want to do that tomorrow. You know, I can't skip it because it just doesn't feel, just doesn't feel the same, and uh, ju just doesn't feel like me. So, absolutely, yeah, your body gets used to it. Yeah, exactly. When you can't do that, yeah, you you lack your hobby, your you know your your habits. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Irene is uh, saying, can't wait to taste that bread. You Hosting. I know yeah. I'm hungry now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, you made such great points. And I love that you were talking about the present moment, like focusing on the present moment when you make pasta. It's not only the making the pasta, but it's also the enjoying. Right? Yeah. The particular yeah. Moment. And if you have family doing that with you, it's even better because you have the joy of having people with you and really engaging in the same activity together. Yeah. It's so, so, so wonderful. And it, it definitely makes a difference, you know, in your well-being, in your, in your brain, your body, yeah. everything. You feel better, right? Mm -hmm. definitely. Oh, my goodness. I love all of these comments. And Darcy is making a comment that was my next question <laughs> because you always post fantastic pictures on Twitter. And Darcy is saying, and you're a great photographer capturing all kinds of beauty. I don't know how you can do that because sometimes the light that reflects in those pictures is like master photographer material. <laughs> Thank you. Oh goodness. And I think we all told you, you should put them together like in a book or a catalog or something and sell them because they are truly very artistic and so beautifully done. And you are like walking out in with the sunrise or the sunset and taking these beautiful pictures of vegetation around you the dogs we'll be talking about the dogs a little later which is so idyllic i would say so yeah. beautiful peaceful and welcoming so tell us how did you develop this photography hobby i mean was it something always in you or did you develop it throughout the years i actually um i, I think i got in touch with uh, photography quite early I remember when I was in primary school, um, my father taught me how to develop old school photographies in the bathroom. Uh, so basically, this was really—I mean, this was, I think, my first contact with uh, with uh, photography. But um, I think I've always been a visual person because I, I remember, you know, uh, also my memory and the way I learn is I learn from pictures and I remember scenes and uh, you know I remember scenography and things like that and uh, I actually always thought that uh, I'll end up working in uh, cinema or uh, let's say in um, films which actually in a way kind of happened because of the nature of the work that I do also includes video and photography and things like that but yeah, I always thought, you know, I will be the female scenographer and, uh, you know, a director. Uh, and I think that has always captured, uh, in a way, uh, my interest. It, it piqued my interest. Um, but yeah, I, uh, since I can remember, I always had a camera in my hand and I took, I took loads of pictures. Uh, and I still do that. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited because we do have like a digital camera at home that we use. Uh, and I have tremendous support in my partner at home because he's, uh, he's the pro of uh, this photography family. He sometimes gives me hints and, uh, you know, he tells me stuff and so on because he also works in graphic design. But uh, uh, for me, it's I'm always, you know, uh, a lot of people joke and say, you're always with something in your hand, you know, either it's a camera or it's a phone or something like that. But yeah, it's like I, I love capturing moments because this is, I think, I store my memories and I store the snippets of life like this. Um, 
and this is just something that that I, I hope uh, to you know uh, remain doing this until long 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 time in the future still and it kind of makes me happy you know it's uh, it is said that a picture can say more than a thousand words and I fully and wholeheartedly agree you know it's like uh, I know that from the first times that I saw films or that I saw photography this was like uh, you know you just stood there in awe and you said wow and it just you know in captures you all and um, I love that feeling it's like uh, you know I can go hiking or walking for hours and uh, you know, uh, we're happy that we have like digital cameras now because otherwise I would be piling on, you know, like loads of film and film and film, but uh, this is great. So easy, yeah. And it shows, I mean, your love for photography shows in your pictures so well. So thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So keep gifting us with these beautiful pictures during the day because we thank are, you i will <laughs> i really love to see them yeah so um i know that we briefly mentioned the dogs and uh as you know my book talks about cats Talk, dogs cats i mean are still pets you know yes. so my cat miss mock is my muse throughout the book and uh, I will share her antics, a sassy attitude, as I share anecdotes about her daily life. And this is a reminder that pets in general, so dogs, cats, I mean, whatever, they generally live a very simple life, right? Which is a life very true to their nature. We, on the other hand, live a life that doesn't always respect our needs as human beings so it's regarding like nutrition movement rest we have very active life very fast-paced sometimes we completely ignore our needs and we put ourselves last in our to-do list and um I follow your daily outings with your two beautiful dogs, Akila and Casper. Uh, they're so cute and I can see they're so affectionate. And you told me they have completely different personalities, which is what I love because see people, people who are not pet lovers think that pets are all the same, but they're not. They have their own unique characteristics and that's why you love them because they show you their love, their enthusiasm, their joy of life in a different way. And that's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I don't know their their age. I think Akil is a little older than Casper, right? You both, you both adopt them. them. And, um, and they have a lot of energy. I can see that in the pictures, right? They're always moving and doing things, stuff. And so I, I'm sure you agree with me that pets can teach us a lot to live life fully. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You told me that you have learned more from your dogs than other people in your life. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> true that. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. And so, and I also read from your notes, being in the moment and never ever giving up. Yes. Would you like to share maybe something about your dogs? And I'll put a picture of you with Akila walking. Yes, <laughs> yes Akila, Akila is the one who doesn't mind, you know, getting photographed and being here and there while, you know, uh, Casper is always on the other side or, you know, Casper, when you take out the camera or you try to take a photo, he's like first he's looking at you and then he's like, okay, I'm gone. So, <laughs> you know, he's gone with the wind. So Akila is like my real, uh, real model. But um, yes, most definitely it's uh, uh, dogs have taught me so much more than anything in life or also any other person in life. And uh, I'm grateful that the two have really different personalities. Uh, and they're both uh, seniors now. Kasper is nearing 11 and Takila is somewhere, we always say, uh, you know, more than 16 because as he was found abandoned and living in really poor condition, uh, they were not really able, you know, you know, to identify the real age. So it was more like an approximation. 
and uh, we kind of just went on from there and um, I always say I have on the on one hand Casper the happy go lucky one uh, he's always smiling he's always active you know ready to go uh, you know whatever it is what happens in one moment uh, you know then the the other moment he's never had a you know like a moment of uh, I don't know any you know bad moments or anything he's always like he's my motor you know whenever you see him he's like hey okay i'm fine how are you okay let's go and so on and uh he's like just you know you just look at him and um you have a much better day and you say it's okay everything's okay or everything's gonna be fine and uh that's that's just you know, wonderful. On the other hand, Akila, he's more like, uh, you know, more like he needs more attention. Uh, I know that in the Divas group, we called him Velcro dog because he's, you know, whenever I move, he moves. He's always near, he's always watching. He's, you know, always uh, very focused. Uh, and uh, that has actually taught me like to, you know, focus in the moment or and be present whatever i'm doing because um a lot of times you think okay i will go for a dog walk i will go out and i will take out my phone i will do this i will talk to other people and so on but uh with Akila's, you know range of special needs i call them because he's very sensitive to noise and movement and you have to you know you have to work with him a lot it's like i really take time off and I really focus on where I am and what I'm doing. Um, and it has done uh, an incredible job also for my mind and for my brain because I really stopped multitasking, which I mainly do in my work and in social media and in workshops. And I focus only on one you know, task at the time, just one thing. So I'm here. I'm in with Akila, I'm with Casper, I'm outside, I'm doing this and uh, all the rest can wait. And um, I think that's the most valuable, uh, let's say, lesson in life that um, I've learned. And it has served me uh, really well in all the other areas in life that I do because um, I was uh, before I was really I was really used to in a way multitasking and I really enjoyed it it was like my you know adrenaline was pumping wow I'm doing this and that and so and so and I was here and there but now it's really like one thing at a time and when the you know old pattern in the brain kicks in it's like oh yeah let's go for a ride Dala it's like you know I feel that I'm, I'm becoming restless and I say oh, oh okay the you know Akila the dog uh, lesson let's go back you know let's go back and you know let's focus on one thing and I so agree Darcy it's like uh, if you're used to multitasking uh, and we all do it because you have to in life a lot of things are multitasking but uh, for me, it's really crucial that we take time off, you know, and then we focus just on one thing, at least, you know, uh, in the overall sector of your day or on your life that you really take those moments and say, you know, now I'm here, I'm here and I'm doing this and that's totally okay. All the other things can wait. Yeah, so true. That happened to me as well in my previous career as an event planner. I was handling like different events on the same yeah. day. And I I was like, you know, my brain was like cooking because yeah. too much. Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. in 2012, I experienced burnout because it was too much. I couldn't I couldn't put a break on what I was doing, you know, it was yeah. going more and more and more and more. And I thought I was able to handle them. And then I realized that I was just getting mediocre results because I was not working fully on either, yeah. right? you know, yeah. and trying to cover all the bases and I was not there for any. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and that, that Sabrina is really also relatable. That's so relatable, relatable. And I want to thank you that you're speaking about this because I think that a lot of times uh, people will notice burnout when it's, you know, the last stage where, where you're actually not able to, you know, you're not able to function at all or you become seriously ill or something else happens. But uh, there are so many, you know, signs and stages 
of um, burnout before. Uh, and uh, it's really, really, I think, important that we, you know, uh, start discussing and, you know, walking the talk about this because it's it's becoming too and too, too common, I think, in, in so many industries and in whatever you do. Absolutely. Yeah, we're tempted to do more and more and more and we can't stand still, right? And yeah. this busyness that I talk about in the book so much, I yeah. have a huge uh, section about multitasking, about the glorification of busyness in our modern society. If we don't show we're busy, it looks like we don't have a job. I mean, yeah. <laughs> To me, showing that I have time for myself makes me smarter because I can take care of myself and my clients at the same time. This is how yeah. I see, of course, not mm -hmm. agrees with, with me, I'm sure. But I think it's very important if we want to live longer, live healthier, live happier, right? And yeah. really enjoy those moments. I mean, if you would, you know, if you worked all, all the time and multitasking and not enjoying your precious self-care time you will not make your pasta you will not make your bread right yes exactly <laughs> you'll be exhausted at the end of the day and you will have your beautiful homemade pasta right yes, I, know. <laughs> I mean i'm just making a, a, a silly example but i'm sure you guys uh get the point and uh, yeah mm. it's very important that you are able to stop to put to set boundaries between work and your personal life because otherwise it will haunt you later with health issues, with, you know, um, mental um, disease and everything. So mm -hmm. Irene is saying we don't have to be everywhere doing everything. We're not superhumans. Absolutely. Exactly. And what I always say is that we are human beings and not human doings. And so we really need our downtime to yeah. find, refine yeah. ourselves. You know, we need yeah. to listen to our, our basic needs. Mm -hmm. I keep saying our genes are the same from our ancestors. They are exactly. <laughs> in such a different way, right? And so our lifestyle changed because our modern society has evolved. We are a very sophisticated species, but we are still an animal species that needs those basic needs. during yeah. that. And we have to respect those because otherwise... We will not function and not only our personal life but our, also our business will suffer and if we're not there for our business who can be right who will be yeah. there so, yeah and as you said zala very important point start, start and learn to recognize burnout before sure. it's too late otherwise it will be yeah. very difficult to recover it will take you months yeah you can have like adrenal fatigue you have you know this burnout that is really mining your daily life and so you will mm -hmm. not be able to do what you want yeah. for a long time so yeah definitely and uh, i just i mean uh listening to you i just i just wanted to add uh what i've uh, for example for me like my biggest uh let's say side lesson was uh to um you know, it's um, we're not so. It's not only that we're like uh, uh, we have this glorified hustle and work, and you know, be busy and be productive. Uh, I mean, if you just search the internet, you will find most of the things of how you know being productive, how doing less with more time and more quickly, and so on. Which okay, I mean, it's it's totally fine uh, for some. But for me, my biggest lesson was uh, kind of uh, accepting and saying it's okay not to be okay all the time. It's, uh, you know, it's okay to have a slow day. It's okay to feel, uh, you know, emotions uh, and feelings which are not, yay, happy, cheerful. I'm, you know, I'm grinding, I'm the best, I'm winning, I'm killing it, I'm crushing it. Uh, I'm not crushing it and killing it uh, a lot of time, but that's totally okay. It's, uh, I found like a rhythm for myself. I found a way for myself. Uh, I totally accept, you know, the ways or the process that other people have adapted for themselves. But uh, it's, um, I found the beauty of also finding the community that totally understands 
you know, those times when you're, you're not okay or those times that are slow. And uh, basically, the, you know, that, um, that uh, need and also, you know, that feeling of taking care of each other, saying, hey, are you okay? Do you need like, you know, do you need a boost or do you need a pick me up something or, you know, do you need like uh, something uh, or, you know, just you just need a talk or something like that. And uh, that for me also is uh, the biggest add value that I got from that I got and I have also from social media. It's not just, you know, for uh, building your brand or, or, you know, building awareness and getting out there, but also for finding your community and finding your people where it's okay to not be okay all the time and uh, you know and just say you know this happened or that happened but it's okay you know it's just one day in your life or it's just one moment in your life and we will go on and you know things will get better and things will get um, you know things will change it's not forever can I hug you <laughs> yes, <laughs> virtual hug. <laughs> this is exactly how I feel like you know, being on social media. I'm not. I'm not sharing a lot of my personal life on social media because I usually enjoy my personal life offline. But I totally agree with you. I mean, if you're not okay one day, that's totally fine. You don't have to be like 100% perfect. Yes. Day. We are human beings. And, you know, that's also one of the problems that most people only share the best in their yes. life. And that causes depression in other people because they see these people enjoying and always being on top of everything and like yes my life sucks <laughs> right? yes you know and i'm not what? what's wrong with this picture I know. yeah my life sucks too you know it's just that i don't yeah. really post about it but you know close friends can know that my life is not perfect when i work with my clients they always say i don't know how you can be so perfect your life is perfect. I'm like, my life is not perfect. Not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> there are good days. But yeah, days and that's yeah. fine. You know, you just go through that and you work through that. You know, I always call myself work in progress because exactly. I will never be perfection. You know, exactly. I always try to be better, to stay better, to share better things so that other people can live better as well. But again, I'm not perfect at all. So. <laughs> So I really love that, you know, you share this, uh, these thoughts. Let me ask you, since we are in a very difficult time with, you know, the COVID-19 and these lockdowns and that also affected, you know, mental health, of course, because of this panic at the beginning. And of course, life is not the same. Um, but so a lot of people resorted to online presence more and more, like working from home and using technology a lot. Did you see an increase in uh, uh, your business related to internet security because of that? Or did it stay the same? Uh, in a way, yes. In a way, yes. Because uh, there is, uh, I read this fantastic, uh, I read this fantastic Medium article that, you know, uh, the scammers are really active and, you know, uh, there are so many scams uh, at the moment going on, especially, you know, we're taking advantage of people's insecurity and fears and uh, there are different, you know, like uh, abundance and prosperity circles and things like that and uh, I think that uh, in this time I have definitely seen the rise also in the sense of uh, taking care of your personal security and privacy because a lot of times uh, security is always thought in the sense of you know companies uh, taking care of that because they have to you know mine huge uh, databases and huge amount of data but I think that also our personal security and privacy is really, really important. So uh, I'm seeing uh, not only people putting more focus on that, but also uh, what I'm really interested in, what is also a huge part of my work, uh, also teaching younger generations how to, you know, be safe online, how to use social media in a safe way. Uh, 
environment and in a safe way uh, and how to protect yourself uh, and also not only protect yourself just saying you know wow beware all of these things can happen but um what i also like to discuss really honestly of course according to the age of uh, young children is you know how to behave in certain situations because there are some things that they will encounter for the first time in their life or they will come into contact with you know content that might be less or more inappropriate uh, how to handle this you know how to educate yourself where to find help what to do you know what to do because there are a lot of not only emotions of you know uh, wow this is happening or maybe this is exciting for some but also you know a lot of feelings of i don't know maybe shame or guilt or wow is this okay you know what would happen if you know my parents or somebody knows this and so on and i think this is a really big segment that uh, we need to focus much more on besides the also the big segment that is opening now uh which i'm also uh, very active in which is you know uh teaching people about finding trustful sources, finding, you know, information that is trustworthy, uh, what is, you know, what can be verified or not, uh, how to find trustful sources online. This is all a huge part of also internet security that I think each one of us has to practice as a part of, I call it digital hygiene, let's say it. But it is really, really important um, because uh, social media and digital world is not going anywhere. A lot of people still fantasize, oh, how cool it was like 40 years ago where we didn't have this and we lived our lives differently. Well, yeah, okay, nostalgia is always part of our lives, but um, I think that embracing the fact that uh, technology and social media are here to stay, they are here to connect us, and um, it's not about the tools, it's about the people who use or misuse them, uh, but, uh, you know, finding ways of how to use the digital tools and social media for good and to benefit yourself, I think that's the, the biggest lesson that we have learned, not only in these times, but we will have to learn it also in the future. And I'm a, I'm a really huge advocate for it because I, I see uh, and uh, I also uh, teach uh, ways of how you can leverage this uh, for your opportunities, for your presence and also for, you know, learning more about your security. So I hope, I do hope that this continues, not just in these times when the digital presence is needed, but overall, you know, it needs to become part of our life schedules. So glad that you are talking about this. Very well said. I First of all, I love the term digital hygiene. I never heard about it, but I really love it. <laughs> And yes, you made a great point. I mean, technology is there to help you accomplish something, not for you to become a victim of it. Yes. Right? People are, you know, too dependent on technology and then they blame it on, on it. Yes. Right? Because they're, they're having uh, problems. But again, as you said, you know, it's the people not the technology that makes a difference. And so yes. yeah, that's, that's a big key to understand. So if you're able to strategically and savvily, savvily, is that a yeah. Savvy, savvy, exactly. Yeah, yes, savvy, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> savvy in a strategic and positive way, that can make such a difference. Yes. And I always, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for it because without technology, we wouldn't be sitting here you know, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. We wouldn't be able to connect. We wouldn't be able to share our message. The people that are here listening to us now wouldn't be able to join us. And, you know, without technology that we know nowadays, I think that 60% of us would be out of a job. Like we're not riding, you know, a carriage to work but we use cars and other you know technology it's the same also for connections and for business it's just you know finding the like the middle ground and the like you always say the balance you know balance things out i mean i work in digital and social media but i still have you know uh 
timer on my phone, I still have timeout and I still have screen time. So it's, you know, I have to, I mean, I have to because I feel better and just simple. Okay, absolutely. Because again, you're a human being as well, right? Yeah. So <laughs> we really need that. Yeah, such a great point. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so I know that we're always, we've been here for almost 45 minutes. Five minutes. So I told you that we could go on for hours not talking about everything, but I don't, I don't want to waste your time, of course. So tell us, is there anything new or upcoming in your life as far as like a new product? I know that you were creating online courses a while ago. So is there anything new that you would like to share with all of us here today? <laughs> uh, well, ba yes, basically I was, uh, I finished uh, the first part of uh, online courses uh, for digital and social media. I had the most wonderful team, hashtag Mladi in Kompetentni, which, is, which means young and competent. Uh, it is a project that helps uh, first-time seeker, seekers of employment uh, find employment, but they also learn new uh, skills and knowledge and uh, find competence in doing uh, different things. And I have to say it was just an amazing group that uh, was soaking up knowledge and I also learned a huge um, a huge amount of new things from them also. Uh, so basically, uh, I will be continuing this. Uh, there will be another cycle uh, in September and October, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and uh, we will see uh, regarding the Corona situation, because I also do uh, Erasmus uh, projects and uh, Erasmus trainings, uh, which I usually do two or three times a year. And it's for I sit in the classroom, uh, how you can enhance your classroom experience. And for uh, July, uh, unfortunately, with this situation, we still uh, don't know because people still have to travel. And it's a, you know, face-to-face -face immersion, ex immersion experience. So we will see about that. But um, what I have learned most from not just this Corona situation is that um, it's given me so many ideas how to turn many things into digital, uh, digital experience uh, or into digital products. So I will be, since today was the last day of school in Slovenia, uh, so I wish great summer to all the students uh, here in Slovenia, but I will be, this summer, I will be focusing on, uh, you know, figuring out a structure and a way to do a lot of things that I usually do face-to-face -face or uh, in real life. Uh, also in the digital space. Um, so most probably I will be not just, you know, upping my game regarding the online presence and online activities, but uh, also finding a framework where I can share all of those things. Uh, and I've usually done it mostly in English uh, language. So now my biggest challenge is to also offer this in Slovene. Uh, also to the Slovene audience, uh, which I'm really excited about. So I think it's going to be uh, quite productive and fruitful summer uh, and also September and October. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm really excited about it because I think the last time when I was in, you know, uh, creating and writing, uh, I do this all the time, but uh, it reminded me of that time when I was uh, when I translated a book uh, that later got published, uh, and it was all that excitement. I actually met the author Terry and White later, and it was just like uh, I got this, you know, jitters and this uh, energy. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, and of course, I will share my uh, journey and experience on social media. So everyone's invited.
Absolutely. Oh my goodness, Zala, that is so exciting. A lot going on, a lot happening. That is yeah. wonderful. You know, it makes me laugh because a friend of mine asked me, Will you uh, translate the book in Italian? Because Italian is my mother tongue. And I told her, I don't know how to do it because I wrote it in English and now I think in English. So in Italian, it will be a challenge for me to translate it. It was so funny. I'm like, Wait, that's my language. <laughs> That was so funny. But no, I'm so proud of you. I mean, such, you know, a, a great future for you with so many accomplishments and, and so many beautiful things coming up. So yeah. uh, congrats, congrats. Yeah, very busy. Yeah, well, I have to say your clients and students are so lucky to have you. Thank you. You are such a great resource for them. You're so knowledgeable and so experienced also on the matter. So they can only learn the best from the best. So I'm so, so, so glad that you were able to share this with all of us. So keep us posted, of course, and I'll be able to, to share course. everything that happens in your life, in the near future, I would say. Awesome. So where can people find you? I really want you guys to start following Zala on social media because you will see, and I'm sure you will fall in love with her again. Oh, again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. My first, my first home definitely is. Uh, um, I'm changing also the structure of. Um, I used to have a different website for English and for Slovene, and I uh, since then realized this is a no go. So I'm basically, you know, uh, putting all together. So there will be one hub. Uh, and I'm working on this framework. So, ta-da! Of course, I will, you know, uh, make it available and I, I will make like a good big, wow, you know, it's life. <laughs> we have a new uh, baby, let's say. Uh, and, uh, but otherwise, uh, my first home is Twitter, will always be Twitter uh, because I, I just love the platform and I love the community there. Um, and uh, then uh, I am present on Medium, which I have uh, I have connected. I uh, do share things there. I share my writing, which is also one of the things, one of the habits that I'm developing, uh, becoming more you know consistent in writing, uh, which I find very exciting. So uh, go check it out uh, and uh, see uh, and. Feel Feel free, free to leave me a note or something like that. Uh, and I'm also present on Facebook and LinkedIn. And uh, I have realized from my colleagues in the, from my wonderful colleagues in the, in this space that I need to up my LinkedIn game. So that's also on my agenda. Next to do. <laughs> yes, you know. And on Facebook, uh, personally. Um, I'm trying, I have really focused on Facebook to, you know, uh, really um, finding uh, my tribe and my people there so uh, that I also um, try to limit uh, also the content that I see there because uh, as much as I love social media, I'm still developing like a, like a good relationship with Facebook. Um, because of certain and many things we will not go into this uh, but uh yeah facebook is the one i'm least present uh, but otherwise you know you find me on twitter i'm there all the time <laughs> absolutely and let me share also your instagram handle because also they're yes. really active and you share these fantastic images so yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. For for Twitter, definitely the mix of personal and business. And on Instagram, I find this. Um, I have to give a huge shout out to Terry, uh, which is also in our divas group uh, because she has used Instagram for uh, personal blogging very successfully. Uh, and uh, I find uh, Instagram really a way of uh, of talking more about my life uh, 
and talking more about things that, you know, make me happy, things that I discover about my work and my life and, uh, you know, about things and thoughts and feelings that occupy my mind. And I really find it like more of a creative outlet. Uh, so uh, I really enjoy posting different things there. It's, it's not really, you know, my professional outlet. Um, I do, of course, enjoy talking digital, social media, you know, security. But it's more, you know, to to show my really like personal, creative, uh, um, shenanigans style in a way. So feel free to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. The real Zala with Aquila and Casper. I love it. Yes, exactly. The adventures of Zala and the dogs. <laughs> I so love that. Yes. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for being with us today. It's been such a wonderful conversation. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. We talked pretty much about everything about life, right? Yes. And I'm sure you guys agree with us on some points and you're like, yeah, we're all the same human beings, right? Yeah. The same, with the same fears, with the same enthusiasm, with the same joy for life. Yeah. And that's exactly what I want to transmit with this show. Um, show that we are so wonderful all together. And even though we maybe, maybe we have problems in our lives and our lives are not perfect, that's totally fine. You know, yeah. it's work in progress. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be a life that matches your feelings, your emotions, your needs, and uh, yeah. you are able to really enjoy every single moment. In a way, so yeah, Zala, you are the perfect, perfect example, and I'm so glad that you were my guest. Uh, yes, I'm so grateful for this opportunity, and uh, so grateful for the people who uh, you know showed up today, and for the people who show up uh, all the time, and uh, you know who show up in the most genuine way. Uh, and uh, that that shows exactly the power of community and that shows exactly the power of uh, social media and I'm you know I'm really grateful uh, and also as I said without social media it wouldn't be you know the two of us uh, and um, I'm I'm really excited to see uh, how also your book um, goes along the way and how many uh, lives it influences and impacts because I think it's such an important you know topic and these are so important subjects that uh, I think that many people are struggling with uh, a lot of us have been struggling with and uh, sometimes it you know you just need some I don't know inspiration and tips and uh, examples that just you know nudge you on your way and thank you so much for doing this Sabrina you rock thank you thank you you know I just want to share my story and really help others because I've been through that and I don't want others to go through that <laughs> yeah but I think it's a very timely book because again as we were talking about society and life today really forces us to have a completely different uh, way of living life which to me doesn't make sense a lot yeah. so I, yeah. I try to really inspire others too exactly yeah and as i as i often say it's like what i wish uh, you know i don't have any special you know suggestions or i don't have any special you know advice i would give myself but whatever i wish to i wish for myself is you know just one simple thing it's from you know uh, also it's from a song but uh, i want to know at the end of my life or at every stage of my life i want to know that i lived it's like it's not you know yeah i've walked the path or i've done this but i've lived you know i've lived and i'm okay with that you know that's 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 the only message that i want for myself and also for others just live live life fully there you go. See? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Live life fully no matter what. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a big thank you to you, Zala Britell. And big thank you also to Irene, uh, to Darcy. I know Tim also joins. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a long exactly. interview. I hope you really loved it. Yeah. So Zala... 
come back soon, please, because I would really love to continue the conversation here. And we have Dr. Tammy. Hello, Dr. Tammy. Hi. Hey. <laughs> conversation, but maybe you can watch the replay. <laughs> Thank you again, Zala, for being with us. Thank you. And to everyone, a big hug. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh my goodness, I loved this interview with my bestie, Zala Britel, and I really hope you'll be able to watch again and watch the replay because she shared some great golden nuggets. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, my new book, Live Life Fully, is available for pre-order and you can find it here at the subcat.link forward slash book order. You see here the scrolling text under my face and uh, so you can pre-order your book uh, you can pre-order one copy or more if you think it might benefit like friends family colleagues team members you know co-workers so you can gift them uh, with my book and the more copies you will pre-order the more bonuses you will receive so go to this page and take a look at all the options that you have to pre-order the book and you know guys if this is not your type of book that's really fine no worries no hard feelings of course any level of support is greatly appreciated and just spreading the word about it will make a huge difference to me so thank you again for joining the interview today with Zala Britell. I will be back this Friday with another extraordinary guest, and I will have Lee Constantine, the co-founder of Publishizer. So Publishizer is the crowdfunding platform that helped me put together this book uh, campaign, and they are awesome. So if you're thinking about writing a book, and if you're thinking about promoting a manuscript or something that you're writing with a crowdfunding campaign, I think you want to watch my next show because you will learn about a lot about what they do and how they do it very professionally and very seamlessly. So I'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching again and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>